Hey, what's happening guys? You know, we've been working on the uh, boost converter project for my uh, tube-based guitar preamp slash overdrive thing. And we're going to be using the uh, UC3842 or 43 AN chip as our uh, control chip for the boost converter. But a, a user, uh, Jim K, sent me some goodies from my... Uh, Wish list. Thank you very much, Jim. And we're going to take a look at a couple of those today because they are a couple of boost converters. Now, they are very similar in their topology as they are both, both using the uh, XL6009 chip. But uh, beyond that, they become a little bit more uh, differentiated. So let's take a look at this one here first. All right, as we look at this, we can see two separate inductors, which means that this is a buck and boost converter, which is very cool. You can see here we have our input. And we have our output. This will be our uh, voltage trimmer. So we can set a voltage. Oh, there's another inductor there too. This actually has three inductors. Anyway, here is our uh, the XL Semi XL6009. This is the uh, controller chip. We got a diode, a resistor. Lots of capacitors, so let's uh, let's hook this up and have a look at it. All right, so for a load, I've got this tungsten halogen lamp. This is a 120 volt DC lamp. Um, it is a purely resistive load which should make for a good uh, test bed for this converter. At least in my opinion. I'm sure somebody out there is going to say, well, well you'd, you'd want an inductive load to truly test it. Hmm, maybe. But I think we can get by pretty well just by using a resistive load. All right, let's get that out of there. Now, bring in the power supply, which I've got set at its maximum right now at 32 volts, 6 amp. And if I... Uh, I'm sure we're on yet, yeah, we're on. If I just touch these, you can see it glows, so... We're pretty good there. We know that 32 volts will light the uh, lamp. It's not going to make it super bright, but it will light it. And let's bring in oh a meter. And let me find some clips for the end. All right, let's get her hooked up here. It's out plus. It might be a little hard to get a hold of. Tell you what we'll do. We'll just uh, a little scrape here. Expose some of that wire. Then I'll be able to get probe on it. But it's, it's my fault. That was just a not great soldering job. I didn't leave myself anywhere to anywhere to work from. So we'll just scrape a little of that off. And 
and that'll give us some access to the wire maybe yes there we are now we can put our leads on there and get an accurate measurement of what is going on okay so out minus out plus good 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 then we can hook up the power supply uh, according to the specs on this is the volt input voltage is from one point no five to thirty two volts in so in minus in plus now I'm going to set my power supply oh, wrong button there Polly five volts so that's set for five volts and we get a screwdriver so we can adjust it I swear I just saw the right screwdriver now now oh grab the wrong one come on all right there we go so we'll power up the power supply we got five volts going in we have 16.92 coming out and if you look there we've got a little bit of light now the power supply is outputting 1.353 amps let's uh let's take this up so we get around 20 volts or so we're at 1.73 amps out. I'm trying to get it right around 20 volts. There we go. So now what we're looking at here is a 4 to 1 voltage boost. And let's hook it up to the scope so we get a look in there at what the waveform looks like how flat it is what kind of ripple we're talking about although for an application like this purely resistive load you know it really doesn't matter but we have the ability to look so let's look all right let me bring you down here to see the scope So that is what we're looking at here. You can see frequencies looking like around 700 kilohertz, but then here we're seeing like 400 kilohertz. So we're gonna need to do a couple things. First, let's make sure we're AC coupled, which we are. Our probe is on 10X, which it is. We're not measuring current. We want our bandwidth limit off. And then what we want to do here is we want to zoom in. And now we're actually seeing the pulses. So I'm seeing between 6 and 900 kilohertz switching frequency according to the specs. It's 400 kilohertz, so we're just not getting a really, really stable reading out of it. Let's put our bandwidth limit on. And if we come in here, we can see a better idea of what the waveform looks like 
Now, I just got this scope, so I'm not real familiar with it. Let's see if we go to trigger menu, source, mode, auto, hold off, hold off. And it doesn't have the high frequency filtering, which is what I was looking for. And your cursor 20 megahertz. Okay. But that's giving us a look at it. Now, let me take the scope off of it here. And again, we are still outputting. Oh, hello. Sorry about that. 20 volts out. And, yeah. We're outputting 5 volts into the boost converter. Let's bump it up a little bit. Let's take it up to 10 volts. And you can see here, we're still at 20 volts out. And our current has decreased to 845 milliamps, which is what you would expect. Because what we're seeing here is Ohm's Law at work. Even though we're messing with the voltage, the power is staying constant, which means voltage goes up, current goes down, or vice versa, one way or the other. All right, so let's take it back down to five volts. which it says is the minimum input or yeah input voltage. We're at 20 volts out. Let's see. Uh-oh. Let's see how high we can crank that voltage up. Uh, according to the specs, 32 volts out should be the maximum. does not want to stay on there nope 21 23 looks like we're getting a maximum of right around 23 volts on this which is fine and that's given us three amps I'm gonna power it off So we've had a good look at it, and we see how it works. Let's take a look at that uh, XL6009 chip and see what makes it uh, tick. All right, so we're looking here at the data sheet for the XL6009. And just some key points here. You can see it is a 400 kilohertz, 60 volt, 4 amp switching current buck boost inverting DC DC converter. Well, it's the switch for the DC DC converters, not the whole thing. So it has a 5 to 32 volt input range, positive or negative output voltage programming with the feedback pin, 1.25 volt reference adjustable, fixed 400 kilohertz switching frequency, maximum 4 amp switching current, Blah blah blah. Here, you know, they claim 94% uh, efficiency. And there are some applications. You can see the pins we have here. We have the ground pin, the enable pin, the switch pin, VN, and the feedback. Well, that's what makes this really nice is this is just a five pin device and it gives you all of that. So if we look here, it is uh, the switch for your boost converter. So we've looked at the boost converter circuit many times. What we have here is the inductor and the switch going to ground. So we have this circuit. The current is going like this. Well, hold on. Current is going from VN through the inductor 
when the switch is closed it goes through the switch and to ground that basically charges the inductor allowing it to form um, its magnetic field then when the switch is open the current flows this direction and down to ground because with this switch open there's no way for it to go through there so there's no way for it to build up the charge it then discharges and it helps to boost up this capacitor here and this capacitor here boosting the voltage basically what you're doing here with this is you're, you're opening and closing a switch think of this you know there's a switch here when you close it circuit flows in this direction when you open it it flows in this direction bypassing the switch causing that magnetic field in the inductor to build up and then discharge we have a diode here to prevent feedback which means the current can only go in this direction and that's you know that's the way the boost converter works it's not a difficult circuit to understand there are some of the absolute min uh, maximum ratings and then we have our minimum maximum and our typical ratings there's another one again these most of these capacitors you see here these are just for power conditioning the important ones are these two here at the end that are going to be building up especially this one here this is your uh, output capacitor which is going to charge up taking that current from the inductor and I hate to say boosting it because it doesn't really boost it by itself it's a combination of everything it stores it and discharges it so all right I'm rambling let me stop so I want to thank Jim K again for sending these in these are really nice there's some other stuff he sent us we're gonna take a look at too but I wanted to show you guys this one just to give you a peek of what the boost converter looks like in you know a more professional version than what I've shown you in the past here this is basically the same thing you know we're, we're doing the same thing here there's our output capacitor there's our output capacitor there's our inductor, there's our inductor, there's our MOSFET, the MOSFET's built into the X6009. Uh, uh, we have the feedback resistor. Yeah. So, beginning of the uh, new year, 2021, we'll be moving along on the boost converter project. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to Jim K for supporting the channel. Sure do appreciate it. Appreciate every one of you guys who watch and have supported us so far in our first four years. I hope you're around for the next four years. I hope I'm around for the next four years. I'm rambling again. That's it. I'm out. Peace.